um, a structure fire response at this home behind me, single family dwelling. Um, engine six was the first engine on the scene, had a fully involved garage fire. Made a good knockdown, but due to the nature of how the fire started, we had fire and had gotten into the uh, dwelling part of the home and into the roof space. Uh, ladder the roof under normal conditions and normal protocol. Uh, went up and made a ventilation hole, opened the roof to have a look, and we had a lot of fire fully involved in the roof space. Uh, we had to retreat off the roof. I guess you would more call that a tactical redeployment, but yeah, retreat. Um, and we had a lot of fire in the roof. Uh, traditionally, in the fire service, we would cut large uh, ventilation holes and, and commit some damage to the structure in hopes of saving the majority of the structure. We had too much fire in the space, and so we deployed the fire stick. Uh, worked very well, which is uh, the piercing nozzle. Uh, got it on the roof. We had very dangerous conditions, snow, ice, cold temperatures, slippery roof, and uh, heavy fire conditions and fire load inside the structure. Um, uh, used the fire stick starting down by the eave, pierced the roof, ran it for less than, probably a minute to less than a minute, went halfway up, pierced it again, um, ran it for about a minute, and then went to the peak of the roof, pierced it, and ran it for about a minute, and uh, fire was out. Uh, the nice thing about that was the uh, uh, due to the dangerous part of footing and uh, the center of gravity on, on, a, on a pitch roof, slippery conditions, you know, it didn't take a big Paul Bunyan swing, uh, you know, the weight of the tool and the sharpness of the blade, went, and this is a plank roof too, so it went through the plank roof, no effort whatsoever. Um, ran some water in it, was done. And uh, the, the uh, fire stick or the piercing nozzle made a big difference. It was. It would. It's what put the fire out. It stopped it dead in its track where it was because it was. It was getting away from us. Now, as you look at the roof, you can actually see where you started fighting the fire in the traditional method, and you can actually see the collapse up to the point where you used the fire stick. Is that what you expected to see? Um, yeah. You know, when we open the roof space, you know, it's like it's like taking the cap off of a chimney. You know, yeah, we find the fire, but we have to expose the fire. Now it's 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 breathing. It's getting oxygen, and it really takes off. And uh, you know, that's that's where our what our tactics do. We have to find the fire, then we have to extinguish the fire. Well, we had a large, large amount of fire, and due to the uh, uh, atmosphere, the environmental conditions of the slippery roof and heavy snow and cold, it was very tough to maneuver up there, and the piercing nozzle worked very well. Stopped the fire right where it was. From a firefighter safety standpoint, um, how important was the fire stick on this particular fire? I mean, you're just talking about how slippery it is, but realistically, how dangerous is it up there without this roof? Any roof evolution is, is, is a very dangerous tactic. You know, we use prudent risk assessment. We don't do anything that we're not, you know, well, we're going to hurt or kill somebody. Uh, but we do have to use some risk assessment. And roof uh, evolutions are probably one of the most dangerous tactics that we execute. And the fire stick, it takes uh, a lot of the problems out of there. I don't need a chainsaw. I, you know, I, I need an ax, maybe. You know, I don't, I don't need a nozzle. I don't need a hose. I don't need three or four guys up there. It took two of us to do it. Pretty slick. Um, the, uh, you mentioned earlier that the fire stick is a relatively new tool for you guys, so it might not have been the first thing that you thought about. Um, you've actually used it again since, since this one. Yeah, um, the fire stick is, is, is a new tool, and, and as the fire service goes, we depend on what works. And so it's one of those tools that looks like a good tool and in theory should work well, but until we get the chance to actually use it. And this is a situation where we needed it. And uh, take a step back, that's a tool we can use. We tried it. It worked excellent. And uh, we used it again yesterday on another fire, and it uh, worked very well. Tell me a little bit about the one yesterday. Uh, did, you, did you jump to the fire stick a little before you might have? Uh, I got off the truck with the fire stick this time. We had a roof fire involving a commercial uh, establishment and a flat roof and the fire in the roof. It was confirmed, and we had uh, two engine companies on the scene. I was third new company, and I came off the truck with the fire stick just because knowing that I had a, a flat roof, flat composite roof, and how they're constructed, that that would be the best tool for gaining access. How about ease of deployment on that one? Just as easy to um, Yes, very easy. Uh, not the Paul Bunyan swing you'd think you would need whatsoever. It's maybe shoulder height, you know, at best, and it sinks right to the right to the hill, as it's supposed to. And last question, um, you mentioned two people really caught this, this fire. Um, the size and weight of the fire stick, how much difference does that make in your ability to actually use it as a useful tool? Um, it needs to be a heavy tool. It needs to have uh, longevity, and it needs to be sturdily built. But also, there's a couple of things that uh, that ergonomically make the tool work very well. It's a handle. Once you pierce the roof and sink the, the tool, now you have a handle. You got. I have a handle that I can hold on to. I'm not grasping the peak of the roof. I'm not using the point of my axe. I've got something that's like putting a, a handle on a door. Uh, works very well. Uh, the weight, perfect. 
I wouldn't make it any lighter. I wouldn't make it any heavier. Heavier. So not at all difficult for one person to get it up the ladder. Um, no, not at all. Works very well, and uh, we we never work alone. We always work in teams. So you know we would never do any evolution with less than two people. And a normal roof evolution can be four, six, eight, ten people, and we were able to do this with uh, two people on the roof and one person controlling the water on the ground. And you mentioned earlier the cap that is around the. Fire stick itself, where it's basically it's a stop cap, I think. Yeah, the flange, yes. Yeah. Now, does that also help with the reintroduction of oxygen and outside? Uh, yeah. The nice thing is it, it it doesn't allow oxygen in the fire space, but also you always get the right depth. Without that, you wouldn't you wouldn't be sure where you are because of the way uh, roofs are put together. You know, it could be multiple layers of roofing, it could be multiple uh, voids and space underneath due to remodeling or further construction or things like that, and uh, you get a sound depth each time, and you're in the right spot. Uh, no, nothing I can think of. The uh, boy, you know, you look at the way the nozzle configuration is. It, it puts a very fine spray of water out over a wide pattern. You want to convert it to steam because steam would put some fire out. Boom. Can you tell us?